This thing's got so many bells and whistles, it should be a clown. Hi everybody, my name is Craig Hogan, Secret Squirrel Concealed Carry owner and operator, and here we're doing a review today of Orpaz's Defense Modular Holster. This holster is pretty cool. This holster was designed to do it all and fit it all, I tell you. That's both a good thing and a bad thing. All right, Orpaz Defense is initially an Israeli company, and as you know, Israel is a place that's been in flux and conflict for quite a while. As a result, Orpaz Defense and other companies made in Israel usually have a lot more hands-on with their products when it comes down to testing. This holster was made to fit a very specific need for the shooters. The very specific need of this holster was to be as modular and changeable as possible for shooters when it comes to a combat zone or changes in duty from tactical applications to law enforcement applications and so forth. Let me explain what I mean. First and foremost is the actual attachment for a duty belt. There's so many different attachments possible, it get, really opens up an entire world of what you can do with it. You have everything from your standard large two inch um, attachment for a belt to something down as small as an inch and a half. In addition to that fact, the main plate itself is made for left and right handed so you can change the holster's positioning and allow it for actual application. The way that it does this is of course through a main mounting system here on the back, allowing for a standard uh, straight up and down or allowing you to be able to cant the firearm as well. In addition to the main belt setup, it also has these additional cuts here on top to allow for a leg drop down holster application as well. Here on the back inside is a main gear piece, which is really a tension and spacer piece allowing for the holster to be standoffish from the mounting platform. The reason why it's a gear piece is it has a set of teeth. Just like on the back side of the attachment plate and the front side of the attachment plate, there's a set of teeth and gears that allows you to be able to really crank down and get incredible tension on the mounting position that you've chosen. Additional things about this holster that make it great for these different types of modular actions is how many different pieces of furniture you can put on your firearm and still fit in this holster. As you can see here on the front, the holster has a three leaf pattern. This three leaf pattern is inside the holster's three separate pieces of tension distance. Tension distance is accomplished here, allowing you to be able to make changes to these individual screws. You can then make the holster go wider and accept more and bigger optics and um, flashlights, or you can make it even smaller, allowing you to have no furniture on the firearm whatsoever and just the firearm by itself. An additional feature to this particular holster, allowing for good seating of your firearm, is a magnet. Located down here on the bottom end, this magnet is right where the barrel of your firearm sits. And as you can see, there's an adjustment and tension screw here that allows you to be able to decide how far up or how far down riding you want your firearm to be. If you want it to ride very high in the holster itself, you can do that just by tension of the magnet. You can also have it ride very, very low, and then you can engage one of the other safety and retention features of this holster. The last major feature of this holster for modulability is this retention piece here. The retention piece here is a swingable hood. As soon as you swing the hood into place, this is a push button retention here, allowing for the shooter to be able to press with their thumb and release the over top hood retention of the firearm simply at a press of a button. The holster itself also comes with some additional pieces allowing you to get just the right fit for an optic or a flashlight. This particular piece, not shown here, is a spacer that you can purchase that fits inside of the holster itself. It is then pressed in place by these two individual holes. So. That's a lot of the good stuff. What's the bad? First and foremost is there's so many bells and whistles, individual changes that you can make to positioning of your firearm inside the holster that you're gonna have to work to be able to get it just right. A lot of trial and error. The best way to think about it is the change where driving an automatic car between driving a manual car, you're gonna be able to get exactly what you're looking for, but you need to get it exactly in just the right place. The magnet for retention on the barrel that fits down here in the very, very bottom 
is not a very overly strong magnet. This is both good and bad. It's good in the fact that, of course, you're going to be able to draw your firearm without any particular issue of holdup, but it's also bad when it comes to the idea that if you don't have the retention hood in its particular place, then the firearm will simply fall out when exposed to gravity. Anyone who's done a short little run to be able to get to cover or concealment knows you don't want to be looking down in your leg holster and find it empty of the firearm. One of the other disadvantages is the actual hinge hood here made for retention over the top of the firearm. Once I got the actual tension down just right for my firearm to be able to put it in just the right place and get the hinge hood in its pos position, there was either too much wiggle room or there was too little. Some of the internal components of the actual press button here are exposed to the elements. So if you're at a particular place where the elements end up getting into your gear, any place dusty or things of that nature, it's going to start gumming up the works. So when your retention is held in just by this push button here, if it's going to get gummed up with any particular type of sand or dust, this could pose a problem over time. So highly modular, very, very specific to what you want it to, you can make it happen. Made for duty belt, made for drop down holster, options for low retention and high retention, and getting the holster position just right for the particular furniture that you've chosen for your firearm. All these additional features, you're gonna have to work really hard to get it just right where you need it. A lot of trial and error. Some of the additional pieces are exposed to some of the elements and with just such basic operating setup can possibly gum up the works and cause failure. While the possibility of good level of retention exists, there's still a little bit of play and wiggle room to some of the uh, positioning of your actual firearm. Guys, I really like this holster. It's really, really nicely done. Even though it has some drawbacks, just like any other particular firearms holster, this one was very cool with all the other extra things that I could uh, pick and choose and get it just the way I wanted it. Almost like I could pour my personality in the, into the firearms holster. It was pretty nice. So definitely worth the money, definitely worth your time. But specifically, of course, what it's being used for, which is a possibility of tactical versus also law enforcement in its application. Not exactly made for your daily concealed carrier, is it? This has been our review of the Orpads Defense uh, Modular Holster. Hopefully you found this beneficial. If you do, go ahead and like and subscribe. Of course, we're gonna be doing more different types of reviews. We're gonna review everything from holsters to firearms, equipment, emergency preparedness, and more. Remember what we do here at Secret Squirrel Concealed Carry, we always protect our nuts.